When that third eye opens in Dredge, it is not a good sign, and you probably don't even know all the different ways you can avoid some of the many disasters to come. Panicking in the game and in real life is not the time to try and learn what to do. Do you ever find yourself panicking and trying to figure out what's going on during those lonely nights out on the water surrounded by nothing but the various monsters in Dredge? If so, don't worry. My name is Banter to Cheese, and I'm a streamer over on Twitch and a YouTuber who's gone ahead and panicked enough for the both of us. Panic is a core mechanic in Dredge and is represented by an eye icon at the top of the screen and it is important to know all the different ways panic can change the game. I have gone ahead and put timestamps down in the description if you want to jump around and see what all can happen when those panic levels get too high. And with that, let's jump right in. Panic will rise when you are surrounded by darkness. This means anytime you are not in an area well lit by the sun or resting in a town, your panic levels will rise. Panic will also rise when using abilities like haste, man Manifest or any of the other abilities unlocked throughout the game. The effects of panic will naturally go down during the day. Panic will also skyrocket when you are attacked by things like night anglers or miasma. If you want to learn what these are, be sure to stick around. The first and least harmful of the effects of panic and dredge are the distortions and chromatic aberrations you will be seeing on the screen. These distortions are the red-blue blurring that you see on the screen that makes you think you should be wearing those 3D glasses. The other visual effect is the eyes that appear on the screen staring back at you like the panic meter does. Both these effects are purely cosmetic and cannot cause any harm to the player, but can be a great way to know when it might be time to head back to the port before a worse fate unfolds. The other non-harmful effect of panic is the obelisks become active. These black rocks can be found around the map and give the player the option to place their hand on the rock and typically does not lead to any further information. With high panic, they will become active and start glowing, and when you place your hand on them, you instead get a unique text based on the locations. These dialogues you can discover will help you discover more information about the local areas. For example, the obelisk in the abandoned resort in Stellar Basin will reveal the reason the resort is now abandoned. These obelisks are a great way to help keep the mood and feel of the game as eerie as possible, so feel free to stop by some of them if you're feeling a bit too relaxed while cruising around in the game. One of the only challenges you will face during the day are crows. These blackbirds are notorious for attacking your ship and stealing their fish. When a crow attacks, it will swoop down and grab as many fish as it can from your ship before flying away. This can be a frustrating experience if you already spent a lot of time and effort catching fish. However, there are ways to prevent this from happening. The ship's foghorn or banish ability can chase off the crows and prevent them from stealing anything, so feel free to let that road rage you have been holding in and really lay into that horn. It's important to note that crows will only steal fish in aberrations that are in your boat's inventory. They cannot steal fish that are caught in trawl nets. Additionally, they do not steal trinkets or other items, so you don't have to worry about losing any valuable loot. One of the most common dangers you will face is miasma, a low-lying cloud-like aberration that appears at night. Miasma can only be dangerous if your lights are on, as it will take an iridescent red color and chase your boat down, greatly increasing your panic levels if it manages to touch the boat. However, if your lights remain off, the miasma will remain a silver color and not pursue or bother you, even if you you sail right through it. This can be helpful if you want to avoid being chased down and want to conserve resources. I would make sure you are familiar with the area though as rocks will be lurking just beyond your view. Miasma will disappear at dawn like all other nighttime dangers, so you can take solace in the fact that you don't have to deal with this menace for too long. Navigating through the waters of Dredge can be a thrilling yet perilous endeavor. You must be on constant alert for various obstacles including phantom rocks. These phantom rocks are only visible when in a state of panic. When panic sets in, the rocks materialize, lurking beneath the water's surface, ready to wreak havoc. The danger lies in the fact that these rocks are invisible under normal circumstances, making navigation through unfamiliar areas particularly treacherous. These rocks do not go away by turning off your lights, and you will still have to navigate around them. It's a strategy that cautious sailors should avoid when trying to navigate through hazardous zones, including the Maros, as concealed phantom rocks still pose a threat. The Maros, known for their challenging conditions, require even more careful navigation. It's still important to remain vigilant and rely on other navigational cues to avoid potential dangers in this area where there are lots of real rocks ready to cause your demise. Water spouts are a common occurrence in the waters of Dredge. While they may seem intimidating, they are usually easy to avoid and don't require much effort to deal with. However, when it comes to aberrant water spouts, things can get a bit more complicated. Unlike regular water spouts, aberrant ones will actively chase you down for the entire night, making them incredibly difficult to avoid. You should exercise extreme caution when navigating through an area with an aberrant water spout. Not only can these water spouts cause significant damage to your boat. They can also induce panic, making them even harder to avoid. Fortunately, there is a solution. The Banish ability can be used to kill the Aberrant Water Spout and put an end to its relentless pursuit. This ability can be a lifesaver for anyone who finds themselves being chased down. Or you could spend the entire night trying to actively dodge it like I have done. Your choice.
One of the challenges you will find in Twisted Strain with high panic levels is the presence of tree roots and vines that can block some waterways and even attack you and inflict damage on your boat. These roots and vines can be found in various locations throughout Twisted Strain and they can be annoying to deal with. When encountering these obstacles, you will need to exercise caution to avoid being attacked or trapped. These roots and vines can block important waterways, preventing you from reaching your desired destinations. To avoid being attacked by these aggressive roots and vines, keep a close eye on your surroundings and steer clear of any areas where these obstacles are currently present. You can also use the banish ability to fend off vines, but not the roots, to continue on your journey. In the open ocean of Dredge, you will encounter a variety of dangerous creatures and obstacles. One such obstacle is the appearance of huge octopus tentacles that will attack your ship when panic levels are high. These tentacles can appear suddenly and without warning and can cause significant damage to your ship if they are not avoided quickly. When panic levels are high, you must be especially careful to watch out for the appearance of these dangerous tentacles. To avoid being hit by the octopus tentacles, I would recommend keeping your panic levels low and remain alert at all times. If you do think you might encounter the tentacles, you might want to have the haste ability at the ready, but you can also use the banish ability to fend off the attacks if you're fast enough. One of the first monsters you may encounter is known as the Night Angler or Ghost Ship. This enemy appears as a ghost ship in the distance, but its true form is that of an enormous ship-eating anglerfish that will chase and attempt to attack your ship upon detection, damaging the hull integrity and increasing panic. The Night Angler can track your ship using the lights and foghorn, making it difficult to avoid once it begins chasing you. However, players can avoid detection by shutting off their lights and minimizing movement. When the Night Angler appears, be prepared to outmaneuver it. Its speed and toughness make it difficult to avoid in the early game, but you can use a powerful engine to stay ahead of the enemy and escape its clutches. After upgrading your ship engine enough, escaping the Night Angler becomes somewhat trivial. The Night Angler appears after 8.30 p.m. and will give up chasing the player ship after 3.30 a.m. if it is chasing, and disappear completely after 4 a.m. Be sure to listen for a horn-like sound when the Night Angler spawns, as this can alert you to its presence and give you time to prepare for the encounter. And by prepare, I mean get out your own foghorn and play a little tune so it can play it back for you. The Phantom Shark is an intimidating adversary that you will encounter in several locations throughout Dredge. This elusive predator is known to appear all over the map when your panic levels are high, day or night. The Phantom Shark is notoriously fast and can quickly close the distance between itself and your ship. However, there are methods to deal with this dangerous foe. The Banish ability is one effective way to defeat the Phantom Shark. I prefer to keep haste as my active ability and when I see the shark, I just head straight at it and just play a game of chicken, turning away and using the boost from the haste ability at the last second, but there's a bit of risk involved in that. Despite the available options for dealing with the Phantom Shark, it is important to keep in mind the high level of danger it possesses. Its incredible speed and agility make it difficult to evade, and its presence alone can increase your panic levels. With this in mind, it is crucial to remain vigilant and prepared when exploring areas where the Phantom Shark may be encountered. That is everything you need to know about the effects of panic. Feel free to let me know down in the comments if I forgot anything. Don't forget to subscribe for more tips and tricks. Feel free to check me out on Twitch if you want to watch me try and learn all these strategies live, and I will see you next time.